We're going to have some topics. We're going to be talking about urine therapy, which is blowing up right now. And we're going to be talking about stress and anxiety and how the body functions and how that affects youth. Uh, we're going to be uh, with Raw of Earth, which is Raw Reality Wednesday. Today is going to be a powerful day. Uh, if you can put in the comments uh, just a word that defines how you feel today what your, uh, what, and what your intention is. How do you feel and what your intention? Put it in the comments there. And let's see what's going on. Give thanks for life. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's super powerful day, guys. Super powerful day. And uh, again, we're going to be talking with Raw of Earth. And uh, Raw... Years, um, he's helped me understand so much about about the earth, about about natural process, about uh, reality in every way, shape, or form. I've been following him since back in the clinic days. <laughs> Somebody come on here just to tell me not to drink here. And <clears throat> you have some shaving cream under your chin. Guide hmm. to earth, I think. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> Here we go. Put in the comments how you're feeling and put in the comments what your intention for today is. <clears throat> well, it's one study. Everybody is uh, everybody wants to talk about your therapy today. So we'll do it with Ra. Ra, are you there? Ra, make a comment. Um, I'll bring you up. Actually, Ra, just put a comment in there for some reason. It's giving me a hard time bringing you up. So just put a comment in the uh, and the comment section there. <clears throat> hey, I'm here. I'm here. We have we have a topic today. I heard, <laughs> but I also heard you ask everybody to give an intention. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Intention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious to know what the intention of everybody is today. This person Don't said work. feeling unsettled intention. Woke up with fear. Yeah, you know, it's today is a fear and urine is uh, bladder is all fear. I was feeling it, man. I was reading the comments and I was feeling everybody's fear. And I'm like, somebody in there, show me a study. And I'm like, man, there's lots of studies. I, I have a, a friend who's one of the world's top vascular surgeons. Uh, Dr. Joe Shavasana and, uh, in, in Los Angeles. And uh, he, um, he became natural. He came to Human Garage because his wife was impacted for 28 days where her colon was impacted. And their only answer was to take out the colon. And he says, you know, like all these years of medicine, that can't be the only answer. There has to be another way to look at this. And so what they did is uh, he got in a plane, flew to India, taught one of the world's top Ayurvedic doctors. And the doctor looked at her and said, just drink your urine. And within 24 hours, it had passed. So she went from, we're going to have to take out your colon or you're going to die, to 24 hours later, it was removed. And Dr. Joe was the one who pushed me over the edge, actually, and, and, and made me a believer. Because like, he's one of the most respected vascular surgeons in the world. And this is where, this is where the... The science and then the experience had crossed. His experience was he saved his wife's life doing it. Well, also, people need to realize that the East have been doing this for literally thousands of years. Like that's, do you realize how old our country is? Our country is, hundreds. Uh, yeah, hundreds of years. We're like little children. I'll actually say that, that, America, the Americas are like uh, teenagers, right? So we need science to validate everything. But the East has already been doing their own version of science for thousands of years. And yes, they were experimenting. Yes, they were taking notes. It's, it's written on tablets. It's written on scrolls. It's, it's everywhere in the East. We just haven't translated it all for us to understand. And they don't care too much to
Okay, so you put out. Yeah, I'm not sure. Can you guys still hear me, or is it just rock or is it? Well said. Uh, so did I? Um, you cut out on my end, but I don't know if that means it's my internet. <laughs> but... Yeah, no. Well, we'll go again. I've been having some funny stuff happen here. I might have to move to another spot. Okay. Uh, they're, they're they're working on internet today. So, yeah, this this is a is an interesting topic because you know urine comes from the bladder, which represents fear. <laughs> Today is a spiritual day. It's a Pisces day in Sagittarius, so it's extreme. And when I went in the comments, I could just feel everybody's fear. And I'm like, what's the fear about? Either you, you don't have to. You know, it's like anything else. You don't, people don't, they, they, they disagree with things that we say all the time. But, but, uh, but then you get all the people coming in. No, it saved my life. No, I'm a doctor. No, this helped. And, and, it, and it's just going, it's going nuts right now. But it's funny how people react, right? Stacy, I just drank mine. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, I, and it tastes good. It feels good. It does. Like you could use your own science and and experiment, and you've got other people's stories that could give you the confidence to at least try even a few drops. So you 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 went um now you would you went um three day fast right and you were fasted and you did urine right yeah. But I wasn't looping, so I still was drinking water. Right. Um, but there's, I've met many people that loop and they don't drink water. They only drink urine and then urine and then urine and urine. Yeah. And yeah, positive things they all have to say about it. And these people that I know, like the ones that are really into it, like I've been, uh, you know, you were talking to Troy Casey. Uh, he mentioned he might have mentioned this guy, Dr. Shabambu is what he calls him, but his name's Eric. Um, but Eric's a friend of mine and I've I've you know hung out with him and his friends and they're all same thing with Troy, they're all like bright, like they're they're glowing. Yeah, bright they're, eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Their auras are strong, their skin is clear. Yeah. And then they drink their own pee. <laughs> 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 you know what? It's it's just weird because you know here here here's something that that we noticed just from um uh, it was one of those things where it's like where where's the world going with this and here we have a we have a post on a Mai Tai fighter that we just uh, did last week that's got a million views almost right and it's got two thousand shares right this post's been up this morning and it's only been up for a couple hours and it's got almost fifteen thousand shares so you know that people want to talk about it, but there, there's a social condition that says, I'm afraid to. And what I found is that, you know, when we started talking about this, uh, you know, maybe six months ago, what I found was people in the comments would say, oh, I've been doing this for years. I was sorry, not in the comments, it's in the DMs, but they wouldn't put in the comments, they don't want anybody to know. Mm -hmm. Right, because it's got a stigma. And then, then you're the person you know, you're the friend who's the pee drinker. <laughs> you have to be okay with that. But I mean, quite honestly, everybody on this call is the the black sheep of their their family. Yeah. You know, we're the weirdos that that care about the food that we eat and the the movement of our body, and that's just it's not readily accepted by society. So th this is a really good point. Because, I mean, I'm not going to argue about the benefits of urine therapy. I do it myself. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen it literally cure disease. I've seen, um, I've seen world-class doctors that are, that are doing it and, and also uh, uh, prescribing it. So I don't even want to argue about that. But what about the social aspect of it? Because you always you push the edges. I mean, even like right to uh, butthole, uh, butthole uh, sun tanning. You push the edges. How? how how does that feel like do you when you're pushing an edge do you do you feel like nervous sometimes do you feel like like you push too far or or do you just do it and whatever whatever so people so the way that you're saying it is how it looks right like i'm pushing the edges um but it's really not that i'm just i'm just 
walking in the direction that my life's leading me. And it just so happens to be at the edge of society. But a lot, a lot of people I've heard, like, like when you're looking at comments and stuff, or people giving me feedback, it seems that I'm doing things on purpose, right? To, to make a spectacle of everything. And like the butthole sunny thing, like that, here's the thing with, with social media, you do need a certain, uh, you do need to pay attention to the algorithms. Yeah. So that video was short, it was to the point, it had all the components, but we literally shot it in five minutes. So it almost like we accidentally stumbled in and made this like beautiful, where all the components worked for virality and Johnny Knoxville shared it and all these celebrities shared it, like all the news companies shared it all over the world. I was getting contacted by news like all over the world. I didn't go on any of them uh, because it wasn't a spectacle for me. Like it was literally what I was doing every single day for the last two or three years was going outside naked the butthole thing yeah that was said for the algorithm but it was more about just get sun on your entire body, body including your perineum which is a very important gate in Taoism and and all the countries in the east and probably ancient americas as well um so the perineum the root right so in yoga as well and then we've got even like the front parts of the sex organs that accepts sun sunlight. There's lots of melanin there, but it was literally just what I do every single day. Um, it's not so much that I'm doing it on purpose to try and shock yeah. and awe people. Yeah, yeah, fair, fair statement. And that's you know that's what we do. We share what we do, um, and where it pushes the edges. You know, like uh, um, I, I think exactly what you're saying. It's it's like we do this because because it works we know it works we have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people doing something before we actually even post it so so we're when we post something we know it's already working and uh, and we're just and we're doing what we're doing is sharing our journey and that's what you're doing is just sharing what what you're learning and what your journey is right yeah what are you feeling when you're touching yourself there oh i i <laughs> I tell you, I tell you what's been going on is, uh, is I've been getting super beefy. Mm -hmm. Like, um, we went to Costa Rica and all I was doing was we had to walk up these hills every day, three or four times. And at the end of the week, I'm like, I feel like I've been in the gym for a month yeah. and two uh, weeks now walking up a hill and, and I'm like, and I'm like muscular. It's just weird. I've just, I haven't felt this muscular muscular feeling in a long time and so that, that's what it is i can't i can't get used to it because i'm like i'm like whoa everywhere mm -hmm. yeah i mean walking's the 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 original exercise for us that's actually one of the things that makes us us human is walking upright yeah. so that's how a lot of the functions of the body get processed through walking i've heard you talk about yeah. digestion and the importance of walking and calf stimulation helps digestion. And that's where those, those meridians go through, right? Like the, the yeah, kidney. Yeah. The, yeah. It's actually, actually, so the reason why we walk after uh, a maneuver or after a treatment, like at the human garage is because it's three minutes after you have a significant change in the mechanics of the body, which is actually fascial mechanics, which the muscle skeletal nervous system responds to. Like muscles don't move the body, fashion moves the body. That's clear as day to us right now. But when you have a significant change, it takes three minutes to uh, to adapt. And you can see this when an athlete gets hit and they're like, they walk it off, watch the timing. Just put your watch on and by three minutes, they're walking normal. Like they can barely walk. And there's also, if you fall down and hurt yourself, the first instinct is to jump up. Because what it happens is the body it, with the brain is coordinating with the brain saying, am I okay? And then three minutes walking is contralateral motion. So it's both hemispheres of the body, right and left hemisphere, working simultaneously and rotating. So it's the most complex activity for the body to, to do. Like if I'm riding a bike and I'm riding fast, I'm not wobbling, but if I slow right down, I have to really balance and it's wobbling, right? So walking is, and the slower you walk, I don't know if you've ever tried it, but if you try to like just walk, biomechanically correct slow like this and do it time after 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 time after
time, so you're doing it right. Virtually nobody can do that. So your hand and your foot come to the peak at the same time. Yeah, contralateral, con yeah. Yeah, so contralateral motion is the toughest is the toughest thing in rotation for the brain to resolve. <clears throat> and so walking is the correction. And now you don't get it when you're running. That's why if you do 30 minutes, people, if you really want to, to change the physiology and the neurology of your body, walk and walk up hills. And look at all the blue zone countries. The one thing they have in common with the, with the best ones is they all have hills like Japan, uh, Costa Rica, they all have these hilly areas that people walk up and down because you're doing contralateral motion and then you're walking up a hill which forces pressure to repressurize in the body. Yeah, I mean, even just the difference between walking uphill and downhill it, and, and how you, your body needs to balance in that plane as well, uh, it's, it has to... It has to compensate whether you're walking up or downhill, downhill, which is another dynamic task the body. You want to try something? So here's, yeah. so here's how pressure mechanics work. So this is what we do for Olympic runners, okay? So if you're standing like this, your feet there, now you're not, what you're not gonna do is you're not going to try to affect your balance. You might even wanna close your eyes, right? Then take your right hand and what you're gonna do is you're gonna, cramp it like this, not crush it, but cramp it so you pull it tight. And then put it down to the side of your body and then see if you lean to one side or the other. Yeah, I mean, I actually feel my whole chain on my right side is activated right. just from right. my hand. Right, now, okay. So it now, feels, if you take feels like a pull. Try to walk and see, you immediately pull to that side. Oh, I need to walk, walk without thinking. Yeah, walk without thinking, without trying to balance. Yeah, it does do it Okay, so, so here's a practical application in sports. You're an Olympic runner. You're running an oval. You're running around a corner like this. You lose force because your body is over, it has to bend. But if you go like this, you fold over, and now you're running like this. That's a 3 to 5% difference on a 400 meter. That means a metal versus a non-metal. Yeah. Okay. So, I, so here's another. I turn one. left, but I just want everybody to know that there's a chair right here. So, my mind was like, "All right, I'm gonna walk this way," and then that's why I was like, "Oh, I need to do this without thinking," because I was like, so, "So try this. Try try just your baby fingers." Just wait, what are you doing with your baby fingers? Like this. Yeah. Right. So just grab them, cramp them like this, and walk forward. And what happens is, your chest goes up. Yeah. It does. Okay, so so if you're walking down a hill, okay, down a hill like this, and you do this, guess what happens? You go like this, and guess what happens to all the pressure on your knees? Your, your pressure on your knees comes off right away. Right. Because you're going into your posterior chain to support yeah. the movement. And you know how I discovered that? I was watching I was watching the hand movements of runners who were like Ben Greenfield who were doing ultra mar or who are doing um what do you call it in the in the bushes and all that um can't remember so i was watching so you okay let me go to somewhere else I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go way over here. See if it's better. So, are yeah, people? Did, are your comments working, Gary? Uh, I think it shut off. But there's something weird going on. I don't know what it is. You can't see anyone's comments. Okay, can you see it now? I can see yours. Yeah, and I can hear you fine. Okay, so I'm in a new area. So we were on. Um, Something, yeah, so so like Olympic, uh, so the um, Ben Greenfield. Remember, yeah, the runners. Uh, uh, what I noticed when I would zoom in on slow motion is that their fingers would naturally go like this as they're running, but they but they weren't, weren't aware of it because I asked I asked a couple of them if they were aware of it as I was training them, right? 
And I noticed that Olympic runners, the best ones, would naturally do that in the corner without even thinking about it. They would just they would close one hand. And then you also see this if you see somebody who has like like an old timer who has a, a sh an injury like this. You see, like an old person has an injury, they'll pull their hand and it'll cramp to that side. So they naturally. So these are these are called pressure mechanics. And here's another one. So if you stand like this. And you and then you turn your turn your palms like this and squeeze your scapula back and feel where your weight goes. I mean it's back in my heels. Right. So walk around with it like this. And then let it go and feel where the weight goes. Like it goes I'm on your falling forward. Yeah, it goes on your shins and on your feet yeah so if i roll my shoulders forward the weight goes right onto the balls of my foot so you look at at bunions look at all the women who have bunions look at what their shoulders are they're like this they're like that so the way, what happens is it projects and it puts the weight on that this is the heel on the front of the foot and then that's what causes the bunion because of the of the of the over usage or the pressing of the bone into the fascia at the nub of the toe and then water comes in to heal it so one of the one of the things for bunions is the first thing is to do is pull the shoulders back mechanically and get it back well this is why because there's only five bones i heard i heard gary brecca say this the other day there's only one bone in the body that doesn't touch and i'm like that's actually not true there's actually five the scapula has, isn't connected to anything, and neither is the patella. So the the reason isn't why there a bone up here too, hyoid, or the hyoid, hyoid yeah. yeah. So so this scap, so the ratio of the scapula to the patella is front back. This is right left. So that's your these bones tell the fascia where we are in space and time. That's how the fascia knows to move. Another thing you do is you could pinch. Pinch your uh, your rib cage on one side, and your body pulls to that side. Mm -hmm. So if you have a fascial adhesion, or if you have a scar over here, a surgery, which is a pinch, your body pulls that side, and then naturally you have to pull this way, and that's what starts to cause the mechanical issues in the body. This is our this is our bread and butter at Human Garage, like 15 years ago. We were working with scars and mechanics on that, but we didn't really quite understand fascia then. We thought we did. But now we understand that it's all pressure in the body. So what about scar tissue? Well, scars, okay, so if I take my shirt and I cut it, right? And, I, and then I sew it back up, it's not gonna sit the same, it's all wrinkled. Well, that, that, that wrinkle here is pulling me one way, that's pulling me this way, so I have to pull this way against it in order to function and walk. So here's, you wanna, you wanna to walk straighter here i'll do i'll show you one really easy take your xiphoid bone right here take your hand like a little prong and you're gonna you're gonna push it in here and turn it counterclockwise and hold it take your other one right on your ct joint and turn it clockwise and hold it so turn it counter turn yeah it. i'm just getting the counterclockwise that's counterclockwise and this and one clockwise free. Yeah, if you're watching us, we might be mirrored, so I'm turning it counterclockwise. And then breathe. Okay. Now, take your right hand, put it on your chest plate, and you're going to turn your thumb from your right side over to your left side. So you're going to turn it that way and take your left hand and counter turn it right on your lower back right where your your your, mid, your thoracic and your spine move and then breathe pull in your spine pull up your sex organs and breathe okay cool now last thing is the bridge of the nose here you're gonna turn it, and you're gonna you're gonna turn it clockwise. And right behind, when you turn it, you'll feel some tension in the back of the head. Counter turn it, and breathe.
look up, look down and do that, and you'll feel the tightening in your mid to lower back when you do that. Okay, now try to walk in a straight line and see what happens. It's like so much easier to walk, isn't it? Yeah. So what I noticed by doing the maneuvers and, and even right now is that the foot, my feet start operating better. I can feel like all of the right. So imagine you're metatarsals. Imagine you're a big balloon, right? If this part of the balloon gets all torqued up, my feet have to go like this. But if we're thinking that the bones are structured, that doesn't make sense. But what you did is took the tension off of your center bone. So the center bone there, like you have three tailbones effectively, tailbone, tailbone, and tailbone, because there's three areas of the body, one, two, and three. Each one has a centering bone, right? And each one of those centering bones, I'm watching the ants get me. So each one of those centering bones tells the body which, the fascia, which, which way to pull or torque. That's how we get people like, that's how we get people to move faster. Like the torque therapy, which is the most powerful therapy I know for, for sports mechanics. We haven't even, we haven't even released it yet, but this one that we started with in 2018. And what we do is we torque the body in areas around different joints and bones, and it increases performance automatically. Because it just like you could walk better by just doing that, imagine doing that to every joint in your body in like 10 minutes. Then you perform with less restriction. Yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, I don't even know how to describe it. Instead of just like moving like a massage, which is linear, it's like bring like that motion that that unscrewing motion seems to go deeper into all of the layers well because the 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 body when you think about it when we move right we move in rotation the body is all about rotation that's why the fascial maneuvers are twist here twist there twist that because the body moves through rotation it doesn't move in a linear fashion that's why walking on a flat surface causes a malfunction in our hips and then our shoulders and our neck and our jaw. So we're meant to move in undulating surfaces because when I step up on something, it's not like a bench. That's why all these people doing all these, you know, performance exercises jump like this. Not how the body works. The body wants to go like this. It does not want to go straight. And if you go straight and you put, if you put uh, lateral movement, on a joint that's meant to go like this, you are going to cause a restriction, and that's where all of our injuries come from. Yeah. I mean, the world's doing bicep curls and tricep extensions when these are meant to rotate. Correct. Yes. And here's another one. If you just take your hand open and go like this and get your range of motion, right? Then you close the fist. Now do it. You lose your range of motion. So you shouldn't be grabbing a barbell because you grab a barbell. Now, if I grab a bag of rice, that doesn't happen. If I grab a, even a kettlebell like this, that doesn't happen. But if I grab a barbell and hold it, I'm restricting my range of motion. And when I do that, I'm training and building muscle function in a restricted range of motion, which eventually makes me tighter and eventually leads to constriction restriction. And then I just get older because I stop moving. That's what that's what getting old is about. It's it's not moving well. Yeah, you're basically taking your hands and shortening all the muscles as much as possible, and then trying to move upstream yeah. the the tissue that's connected to this. Yeah. So you're it's all being pulled up into. Well, I guess it's being pulled here if you're closing your hands, and it's pulling everything towards that. Well, it, it's a little. Bit, it's even a little bit um yeah i'm using than that. old verbiage right so like if you got one two three joints you got one two three joints one two three joints of fascia that's where the fascia meets right so if you uh, technically if you affect this joint here so do a squat it's a squat okay 
now take your finger and right at the base and just turn that one joint. Okay, now do a squat. You feel more restriction in your hips and your glutes. Let it go. Now opens up the glutes. So just it really does. the pressure in this joint affects the pressure in here and in here right away. That's what we discovered. This is how we got Olympic runners to run faster. This is how we got professional athletes to perform better. Is that we were, and we didn't know what it was, but we could see that by affecting the pressure mechanics in the body, we were affecting the body's ability to perform. Because if I have pressure on a body, it actually takes away the ability. So like what we use is compression socks. Mm -hmm. And people go, oh, that makes me feel so much better. And I'm like, yeah, for a moment. But that's pushing pressure into another area, which is eventually going to come back down and affect all of your range of motion. And, and so there's all these beliefs that we have around it. But it's like, it's also like, um, why does, why does, uh, like why does a knee brace where you put neoprene around here why does that support my joint it's because there's more points of contact in the fascia the fascia which is the structure feels more stable because technically a little bit of neoprene isn't going to support the the bone and the muscle and all the weight there's no way so how does it do it it's affecting the pressure distribution in that area i mean we have people that use it and they know how to use it, but they don't know why it works. I always wondered that. Like you get an elbow brace and it's just like a piece of neoprene. And it's like, how, how is this? Because the way I was thinking about it was like bone, tendon. How is this supporting my bones and tendons? It doesn't. Right. That's my, that's my point. I looked at it and said, there's no way that could support the bone. Well, here's another one though. And so why does water, why does water all of a sudden make us looser? It's because there's constant pressure all over the body. You mean being in yeah. water? Being in water, yeah. Yeah, it puts pressure all over the body so the body feels safe. So that's why we use, in fascial maneuvers, that's why we use three points of contact. So if you like, just take your one foot, put it on top of just touching your other foot. Take your one hand, touch your chest. Take your other hand and touch your head. Everything relaxes. Take your hand off your head, take your hand off your chest, tightens up, put it on your, your chest, put it on your head again, it relaxes. So the body, the whole fascial maneuvers process is based upon three points of contact. Well, one of the points of contacts is atmospheric pressure. There's 14.7 pounds of pressure per square inch on your body. Aggregate on your body raw is 2,000 pounds of pressure average. You know, a smaller person a little bit less, bigger person, a little bit more, but 2,000 pounds average. That means that inside your body, you have equal and opposing 2,000 pounds of pressure. That's a lot. And if fascia, it, it has the breaking point of, t of steel, tinsel steel. So that means that tinsel steel breaks at 50,000 pounds. So in order to tear fascia and tear a muscle, you actually have to exert 50,000 pounds of pressure. And the question is, how does that happen? Now, you, you have, have you heard, you've been in a gym, have you heard somebody uh, tear a pec or a quad? It sounds like somebody takes a two by four and goes, yeah, it's bang. Yeah. Sounds like a gun goes off. Right. Yeah. That, I've heard How it. much noise would you have to make? How much pressure would you have to make to make that noise? Even if you hit somebody, it wouldn't make that much noise. It literally sounds like, a, like somebody takes a two by four and hits a wall. Yeah, you can hear it in the entire facility. Like everybody yeah. in the whole gym will hear. Yeah, it's louder than dropping a weight. So, so you think about that. What kind of decibel, what kind of pressure would it take to create that kind of noise? That's, well, that's 50,000 pounds of, of aggregate pressure. And it's a pop popping sound, too. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's like pressure it built it up. It doesn't go, it doesn't tear. It's it goes like a bang. pop. Yeah. So, so, so what happens is, is that the only way to tear, and you know, think about it, you could gain weight, you can go up to six, 800, 900, 1,000, 1,200 pounds and not break. So how is it that when you move a muscle, you tear it? It's because 
you have a contraction in a muscle from a range of motion that's restricted, and then you exert it against a contraction with pressure. Now, when you do that, you're, when we're moving, so that means we're moving pressure around the body. And this is the thing that people, this was the whole foundation of uh, fascial maneuvers and the human garage therapy. It's pressure mechanics. We haven't even begun to tell the world that yet. I mean, we've, we've leaked it out a little bit, but we've never actually put it out in, a, in an education format, but we're going to. Because the next thing we're gonna release is practitioner version torque mechanics, which takes a person who can barely walk, just like you're walking straighter after turning your center bones. Imagine, imagine three people torquing the ball. Yeah, you broke up a little bit there. Can you hear me? She, she was FaceTiming me and I didn't have it on Do Not Disturb. Yeah. And, and it literally took over all the live. It like, I've had all kinds of weird stuff happening. Yeah. If people, so that happens to me sometimes. People call me on Instagram while I'm doing a live and Do Not Disturb doesn't work. Yeah. If anybody, well, I guess. If yeah, they can hear us now. All right. So um, two things came up. Number one, I'll, I'll stay on the theme that you're on with the pressure mechanics. Um, is there, is there, is there something stronger than contraction that can help you? So like, let's just say if we're doing movement, the, the traditional way is that we're taking a muscle and we're contracting it. And so it's about squeezing everything as tight as possible and then doing the movement, right? That's what we're doing when we're squatting. We're trying to we're trying to lock everything in and then go through the squat. So is there any benefit to being more loose? Because even if I think yes. about like yeah, so, so power comes through and tight range of motion. Key. So what takes away power is restriction. So if I restrict this, I have to lift, I have to fight against the restriction at the core, at the root. So if I remove the restriction, I can I can move move through that range of motion easier. And the other part too is, if you think about the most transformative and powerful movement of a human being, when we want to adapt to a new environment, which is even sports, if you think of downhill skiing, what do we do? It's all counter rotation. That's what my observation was, that counter rotation adapts the body from being here to here, to being a whip, a spring, because it rolls that spring up and then then slides it. Think about the guys who wear the blades, who are, who run, the runners who run on the blades. You know, they have mm -hmm. the, quadri the, the paraplegics. Boing, boing. That, that blade doesn't look like it should work, right? No. No, no because, it's, because what happens is the spine is, the spine is a cur curve, right? So that's that ex it's expanding the curve. We don't have straight motion. We have we have curve curvature and reaction is power. So you have more power by going like this. That's why when they that's why when they throw a hammer throw, they go wham like that. Those big big Scandinavian dudes, they don't just go, go like this. They turn. turn yeah. Right. Yeah, everyone up on an angle you know what's funny regarding that is that i used to compete in crossfit for those of you that don't know and i was very very good at it i was top few hundred in the entire world for six or seven years which out of millions of people that's that's performing really well i was smaller than everybody my like 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 very like i i have very small wrists everybody i was competing against were was perceivably twice as strong as me. And I had these weird strategies because I have injuries all over my body. So I had to come up with like strategies of how can I perform more power output without actually being stronger. And one of the things that I would constantly think about while I was competing was to relax as much as possible. So if I'm lifting a barbell overhead, I'm trying to use 
uh, I was trying to figure out where I can turn off my muscles as much as possible, as opposed to staying contracted the entire time. So for me, the whole game was, where can I turn off my muscles? I, maybe that's the wrong word, but how no, can you're, I you're relax? No, you're using the right word. It's, it's because muscles, you actually use the exact right word, which people don't relate to, because they think that muscles are driving the function or action of the body. But part of the science that we, we, that we uh, worked on was that muscles don't actually move the body. Muscles stabilize the movement of a body because if you put an electrolysis on a muscle on your bicep, it goes boom. You let it go, it goes boom. It doesn't have any gradients. It can't go different direction. It just goes and contracts and locks up against the bone. So that means that if the muscle signaling was get it when it gets the electricity, it just goes boom. So like if you're walking, your fascia is what's sensing the world and your perception is what's telling you. So if you're walking and you miss a curb, right? So you just slightly miss a curb, then you go poof, and you get all, everything tightens up on that one side. Because remember, bones are piezoelectric. So when they touch, they create a spark. So if, you, if your perception isn't right, and you miss a step, all your bones in your feet touch, then your ankles, then your tib fib, then your femur, and then your knee, your femur, and poof. And then all of a sudden, that whole side of the body is locked up, just like it was stimulated like electricity. So fascia is what makes movement and that stabilizes. If I, want to, if I want to do that movement better, I can stabilize, put an arm there. That's what the muscle does. It stabilizes the movement. Muscles don't drive it. And this is why a gymnast, like this goes back to a time when I was, um, like when I was young, I was like 16 years old and I was trying to get to a 300 pound bench and I couldn't get it, right? And I was like, kept pushing and kept pushing. And finally I got over 300 pounds at 17 years old. And, and then I had a buddy. Finally, finally at 17 years old. Yeah. Well, People are working out I've been their working entire out life. Grade nine. <laughs> you know, and but remember, I compete. Those pictures you saw of me was 18 years old. At, at the, I was 19 years old. Just turned 19 at the national. Just turned 19. So, so what happened was I, I got over 300 pounds finally. And then my friend who's a gymnast never lifted a weight in his life. He came, sat down, and he went. And I'm like what the hell how is that possible and it's because he had range of motion and strength and core strength and this is what you had as a crossfit athlete you had range of motion and core strength that's why you were winning and you were and everybody else is working out you weren't even working out right the other thing that came up that i wanted to ask you about is um first of all i've never torqued this these these uh parts of my hand and it feels really good but is there any coordination or relevance between like the inner? So this is like the the uh, um, proximal side of the hand, right? It's like a, yeah. well, it's close to the inside, and this is like close to the outside. Does does this go somewhere to like maybe the inside or the outside of the leg? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, is there uh, a difference so these between these this? coordinate to these exactly? And you know when we do our finger release, we do. We turn away on this finger and on this finger. Oh, yeah, I've done that. And then we do yeah. inward on the others because when we're running, in order to maximize motion, you can't have them all go this way. You have to have two counterbalance. So the inner toe turns inward. Uh, and uh, sorry, the toes, the hands are, the toes are exactly opposite of the hands. So the hand, you turn inward and then you turn finger outward, outward, sorry, outward on the thumb, inward, inward outward inward yeah i remember that okay and the toes are exactly the opposite because when we're moving it requires that it requires that balance because we have two bones that come up here that are connecting and those two bones require a, a, a counter torque in order to perform so what if you don't have that memorized is it okay it, it, to for, for the go average person way? Unless, you're, unless you're olympic athlete it doesn't matter yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, the, the amount of difference, 90, per, 90 to 95 percent of it is just to torque it one direction and pull because you're just loosening it. Now, if you're using it for performance, if, if I'm getting you to perform and you're at your peak of performance and I twist another direction, you'll notice the increase or decrease. But it, the average person ain't going to notice it. Yeah. They're performing at the very, very edge. Yeah. yeah. And 
these these uh, philosophies were built with working like runners with like Tyson Gay, fastest man in the world, you know, and Lashinda Demas, uh, mm -hmm. silver medal hur uh, hurler. You know, these were like people that we were learning from because what we were doing is looking at what injuries did they have, why did those injuries happen? You know, here here's one. You My end squat feel feels healthier than ever just okay, so, like so you want your, your squat to get healthier let's relieve pressure off your knee so take your fit right right off here and right across the bone pull the skin back does it matter which side just do the right one first so left hand here push the skin back on the bone and breathe okay now do do your air squat. Oh, well, you feel that difference on your right I'm leg? I'm feeling a bunch of movement. Like there's cracks in my hip. My my yeah, toes so walk, even cracked. Walk crack. and feel your right leg versus your left leg. The right leg feels light. The left leg feels heavy, stuck. That was crazy. My my right hip cracked. My toes cracked. My on my right side. So let's do the other side, right? Because I can't be oh, on balance. So, so good. Oh, oh, man, I haven't done that in a couple weeks, and that feels really good. Oh, oh. So. Can you imagine, you know, like we have all this knowledge about the body that, that right now we're just like, you're in pain, do this, do that. We have like, we have like how to, how to fire hormones, how to move the body, how to increase uh, function in a specific joint or range of motion. We have all these different things that right now we're just not, we don't have the bandwidth to show everybody. But here's, here's one. So feel your ankles. Okay. And then walk around and feel your toes. Okay, so three fingers on your jaw, the right one facing backwards and the left one facing forward. Torque. And then breathe. Let's up and breathe. Move around. Open and close your jaw. Okay. Now this is wild. Now walk and feel your toes again. Squat and feel your ankles. <clears throat> mm. So let me tell you the, the thought behind that one. You're, this bone here is an L shape. So it's signifying another L shaped bone. If you look at your hip bone from the side, it's actually an L shape. And your, your ankle bone, L shape. Yeah. So when you move the fascia around those bones, those bones are similar. And if you move, take the pressure off of similar bones, then the action of that area of the body changes. I also was, I don't know the anatomy as well as you, but isn't there like a certain amount of either muscles or attachments in the jaw? There's like the same number of something in the jaw compared to the hips. It, it, it is, it's a, it's a replication of the hip. And, um, and so the, the other part too is your, 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 uh, your palate is a is a diaphragm going down like this but your pelvic floor is an opposite diaphragm that's why the palate swipe works because as you counter rotate your head your hips are exact rotational difference so if you have tightness in your palate on one side it'll affect the rotation of your hips and vice versa mm. so do so take a walk now feel your swing As we're doing it and then what we'll do is a palette swipe so just take the thumb put it on the top right hand side go right to left oh, 
Oh man, I needed to do that today. <laughs> then what? Now you now your hips are swinging more. Yeah. I didn't even notice the movement before. I don't even think I was moving at all. In that. Uh, it was restricted. Yeah, because what we think is we think strength comes through tightness, but strength comes through flexibility and range of motion. Again, this is why you were like not the biggest guy, but you were winning CrossFit athletes. You're like you're in the you're in the top, you're in the hundreds out of millions. Right. But you're not the you're not the strongest guy, but from a from a standpoint of lifting weights, but you're definitely have all the mobility, which is really the strength of life. I don't give a shit how much you can bench. It doesn't mean anything in life. You can bench all you want, but I go to these guys who can lift all this weight and they can't they can't do anti gravity. They can't put their hands behind. That's why I used to be. I mean, how is that how is that gonna gonna benefit you? Bruce Lee proved this. I mean, Bruce Lee was just this skinny little guy who killed everybody. Yeah. <laughs> killed everybody yeah and he was he was super knowledgeable about the body and i do remember that he had a concept which was relax until it's needed and at that point you put the force yeah 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 the one inch punch from him but what he was doing at the at that side is he was exerting energy or force like like, I can push force around. So I can knock people off balance when they're in my presence. If they're not aware of it, I do it as fun over here. I just like, people go like that. They don't even know what happens. It's So I've been practicing, I've been practicing doing that because at the end of it, what moves us, we used to think that the brain moved the muscles to the hormonal nerve connection, but Again, it takes a second and a half for a nerve signal to go from the foot up through the brain, through the humiculus and cerebellum. Humiculus is how far, how hard cerebellum is motion, elegant motion, down to the foot for motor control. So my question, we were, what happened in the clinic is we were doing nerve conduction testing on somebody. So we had a machine in there. So we could test the nerve, see where it went with the EEG to the brain and the back. And, um, and it took a whole second and a half to make that loop to connection to read. And I said, well, how do we uh, move when we step on glass? And they said, well, oh, the Golgi Harry, that's tendon. silly. It's a ganglion right. reflex. And I said, no, 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 that's silly. Because that means if I step on glass, I can go point. But I don't. I move intelligently to safety. But I'm moving to safety before the brain is even aware that there's a threat. It, the I move to safety the second it happens. Like if I step on glass, I move within milliseconds. The brain doesn't even know there's a that there's a threat. So I'm like, listen, I I I'll 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 agree. I'll, I'll let you say you don't know. I used to say this to my practitioners. I'll let you say you don't. You're not smart enough. You don't know. You don't want to know. You can't figure it out. All those things are okay, but you can't tell me that's just the way it is anymore. You can't. You can't just leave a gaping hole like that where the brain doesn't even know that there's a threat and the whole body's moving to safety and then and then take a step further with perception right so if i told you that carolina died right now and you believe me your whole body goes into shock you feel it viscerally like i could feel your heart drop as soon as i said it and then and then I tell you five minutes later, oh, it's a different Carolina. You start to come out of shock. Oh, thank God. Thank you. But the, and every system in your body is compromised. Your nervous system, your neurology, your function, your digestion, your hormones, your glandular system, your lymphatic system, everything is, is in a state of shock. But it was based upon a perception, not even a reality. And then when I take away the perception, it comes out of shock. So... In other words, perception is the highest state of function or dysfunction in the human body. So why is it when we go to a doctor, he's not saying, what's your perception about this event? Like, like, a, like a woman who's trying to cure herself or fix herself, she's got kids and she's afraid her husband is going to cheat, is cheating on her, is going to leave her. Her digestion is never going to work, right? Her hormones are going to be unbalanced. She's not going to sleep, right? Or a guy same thing he thinks his thinks his partner is gonna his wife is gonna leave him and he's fearful you know because it because 
then he, he's like, all that stuff that overrides that perception overrides every function in the body, but we don't talk about it at all. We're trying to everybody's trying to fix the body, even all these things to fix the body. Even somebody was talking about gene keys the other day, and I'm like, yeah, that's from the body down. But if I step outside into, you know, where how do we move? Well, we have this energy ball of energy. It's called an entropic field, which we can shoot and measure. That's moving around, and the body's responding to its requests. Like, how do we know we're thirsty? The body don't tell us. The field tells us you're thirsty. Oh, oh. And then I get a thought, and that thought has a narrative. And if that's where that's where some mystic, mystical stuff comes in, because if we ignore those thoughts, then there needs to be a stronger signal. And that's where things like a car accident or slip, slip and fall, like if you're getting signals to let's say slow down or change directions in life, and you just keep on staring at your phone and scrolling the feed and, or working hard, and you're just continuously going in basically the not the not the direction that the field's directing you in, then there's going to need to be a stronger solution for that. And that's where an injury, something happens traumatic, and then it's forcing you to change directions. Yeah, so that that's that's what I noticed as a practitioner. Okay. So this is the reason why I no longer in 2018 wanted to be a practitioner. I had at 2018 I had um, I had seven years of watching large numbers of people come through. And I would see that when everything else failed in the world, they came to human garage, we fix them. They go out two years later, they come back and they're, and what they had was twice as worse, twice as bad as when they came in before or somewhere else. And then you, you fix it again, they come back two years later, like two years, almost to the day. And then something else happened. And after seeing this now going on to my fourth cycle, you see it with one or 10 or 50 or 100 people. When you see this over thousands of people, you're like, holy shit, what's, what's the common denominator? It was me. <laughs> I was fixing them, taking away the lessons that their body or their life was trying to show them. And then they were just going back out and boom, they would get it worse. So I realized that people's pain was increasing because I was fixing the pain that they didn't recognize. There you go. And they literally couldn't even feel it, right? Didn't even know it was happening. Because they were well, still trying to fix fix something in their body without asking why is that something there? Yes. I want to go back to the perception versus the whole, basically the body responding through hormones or nervous energy. Because um, if we find out some information and then like let's say a conversation with somebody we f we find out that like oh maybe they didn't say this thing that i thought they said but we were so agitated from that when we find out the truth it doesn't necessarily relieve everything in the body right you're still kind of like it, it actually absolutely it, it it does the opposite because i have, have a relief in the perception but then the body doesn't have a, a, a closing because i never thought my way out of that i never talked to myself and said hey, maybe I need to think differently. Maybe I have a perception. I'll be open to the experience, which is the learning cycle. So it just like cuts it off and then I get to do it all over again. Right. And so, um, but the, that's definitely true. The, the point I was getting at was like, so I noticed like if I have to go, go speak on stage, right? My body's reacting, nervous energy, right? Imposter syndrome, all that stuff's like, I actually like my heart's, beating faster sometimes i get the chills um and then i have to work my way through that right i'm doing it with my thoughts but the thing that i notice that fixes it the best is to open up my heart center by basically breathing in as deep as i can holding the breath for a second or two breathing in deeper hold my breath for a second or two breathing in deeper and then i pump i do a navel pump um for like five or ten seconds and then i release it all and it's just like opens up the heart. And that was the thing that I could, that I learned to overcome that energy that gets into to me and either makes me feel nervous or anxious about something. Let's do it right now. I, I, so I learned this from, it's called the master key system. There's this book series. Okay, let's written in the, do it. Take us through it. All right. So this especially works if you're nervous, if you're getting like stage fright, 
or something. So it's very simple. So you're just trying to fill up the heart. So every, so just take a normal breath in, normal breath out, breathe in as deep as you can, hold that breath for just about two seconds, breathe in a little deeper, hold deeper, hold. Now do stomach pumps by still holding your breath. Pump your stomach up, 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 up. Up, up, okay, that's created more space. Get in a little bit more air. Hold, and then just re release. Oh, man. So I, I do that two or three times, Woo. and all of that, that and then I can focus on what I, on the people. That feels good. Yeah, and and I haven't, I don't really get agitated like in the environment very often, but next time I do, like if something cues me, as you say, or how, how other people say it triggers me, if, if that happens, I'm going to see if that gets the, the, the response out of my body. But I know that for, for stage fright, yeah, it that works. Yeah, that actually would work. So th here, here's the question is that um, since we, since we uh, had that conversation of trigger versus cue, um, have have you have have that made it? Have you tried that? Have you oh, thought it, of it a different? Way? It works. It works definitely because nothing's nothing's about anybody else, right? It's all happening inside of us, like everything's inside of us. Yeah. So, so, so the that's that's a big thing. There's a couple things that I do right now when I feel like I'm triggered. I'm, I go right away. That's not a trigger. It's a clue. Okay. What's the clue? I start looking around energetically physically and the other one since everything works out anyways when something's really intense i go <laughs> holy crap i wonder how this is going to work itself out and yeah and, and that what that does is it takes it out of me and puts it right in the in the field and it so i'm so i'm no longer responsible i'm now observing oh wow this is going to be crazy i wonder how this is going to work that that was like when you and I were texting a couple of weeks ago and, and you, you guys were flying to Costa Rica and I committed to taking over the live. And then I was in bed with headaches and body pains and na nasal stuffed up and I could barely talk. And I was texting you the night before and you're like, I'm excited to see how this goes. And I was like, <laughs> I haven't spoken a word in four days. I'm and I was, and I responded like, I'm excited to see how this goes as well. Cause it was like, <laughs> I have no idea how I'm going to get through this, but it's going to be a fun movie to watch. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I look back at the, the, the most entertaining, fun and transformative times in my life. And it's when I thought something wasn't going to happen and it worked out like, like, I, I, I remember once we're driving on the highway and, and, uh, we weren't, we were like, we got this new uh, navigation system. It was like uh, satellite navigation or not navigation. It was, yeah, satellite navigation. And, and we were like busy playing with it. It was back in the nineties, right? We're busy playing our late nineties. We're uh, busy playing with it. And we're like, and, and we realized all of a sudden it goes ding and we're in the middle of nowhere. And there's like, there's no gas stations. We, we, cause we are, so busy playing with it, we we missed the fact that we needed to get gas, and <laughs> and it was like one of those moments where, well, I guess we, we just keep going. We kept going. Yeah. It we we literally ran out of gas and we rolled right up to the gas. That's amazing. I've done that a few times. Yeah, and it, it, it was like, and those were one of those moments we were laughing and howling because you know that fear kicks in. We're literally in the middle of nowhere. There, it's late at night. No one can help us. I mean, it was one of those things, right? But that was one of those transformative times in my life where I learned to just trust that that the universe has got me. Mm -hmm. And that's a skill to do. It's like sitting in your faith, because you've gotten through everything that you've ever got that you've ever faced in your entire life. We all have, and it's brought us to this moment. So when we have a new challenge, we get to remind ourselves. <laughs> we've gotten through everything else we're going to get through this as well so how do you how do you um how do you deal with that like when you're in a situation and you're in pain and you've got 
and you're like you're holding out for something a belief what do you tell yourself so first of all there's an equation that i remind myself which is um suffering equals pain times resistance so pain times resistance equals suffering right so okay. the pain, the pain is going to the pain's going to be there if i resist it i multiply the pain and, and that equals more suffering but pain times zero resistance equals zero suffering so i can deal with the pain or the anxiety of like the unknown but i'm not going to suffer if i accept it if i okay okay i have a i have a very i have a very visceral scientific uh analogy to that if you have a level three pain in your body and your body fires adrenaline, norepinephrine, and cortisol, stress hormones, that three becomes a six or eight instantaneously. That, that's resistance. Mm -hmm. That's it. right. interesting. So it's just like the body. Yeah. And then it's, it's all, it's all, for me, it feels like mental gymnastics. Yeah. Like it's like a thought comes up and it's like, that's not going to serve anything if I worry about running about running on a gas. Like to build that up, it's like we've got as much gas in the gas tank as we have now. The closest gas station is this way. Like focus on that and just see what happens. Like the see what happens thing is an amazing place to sit in because it's it's that's the experience of life. That's being present. If we're worrying about the future or or anxious or angry about the past, then we're not present. And so when these challenges happen, it's it's like this is a time for me to use my skill set. It's right. a time for me to build, to challenge myself. And the thing is, everybody thinks that when they if they go to a self-development seminar or they do they meditate for three years, that that means that their life gets less challenging. And it's the opposite. It gets more challenging because we're more capable, we can handle more. And number one, we're going to find ourselves in situations where we're at our capacity because that's what we do. We go into zones where we are capable. So we're gonna have more challenging um, abilities, but then also it's life's boring. If that, like if we're, like we're not here just to sit on a beach and relax forever. Yeah. We're gonna literally, that's like, the, that's like being in jail. In jail, you take away everything. Yeah, you're in social confinement, you're in solitude, but on top of that, you have nothing to drive towards. Like there's 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 your your sense of will and establishment and and effect like do you have self-efficacy? Are you able to accomplish things? All of that is taken away from you when you're in jail. And it's the same thing when you're on just like vacation mode forever. Yeah. That's I, why I relate to that millionaires billionaires celebrities that these people's life some of them not all not all of them don't there's some that wake up but some of these people's lives are an absolute mess like the the children of billionaires drug addicts they're my you know partying clients. they're my clients man i worked with I'm, i i won't say the names but i've worked with some of the biggest billionaire families in the world and their children they're incredibly messed up right. i haven't i haven't seen one normal one that's the thing yeah, because they they don't have the challenges that we have. These challenges keep us human. They keep us sane. They keep us on track. So somebody says, I need a new word for challenges. I get it. So it's, it's not a challenge. It's a lesson. It's a learning. It's an adventure. An so opportunity. If I, yeah, because, I mean, if I'm, if I'm angry, frustrated, it's a challenge. Like, I've got to fix my car. Uh, my car breaks down. i got to fix it. But if, it's, if I'm MacGyver... It's like, well, how do I get yep. through this? How do I yeah. make this work? And it's like, wow, I got a story to tell. So it depends on what my aspect is. If I was on a reality show and they, and you're in a car and it breaks down, you have to figure out how to make it work. And you're going and the winner gets a million bucks. You'd be talking about how good it was and all that. But if it's not a reality show and it breaks down and you got to fix it, you're like, oh, this is so horrible. Right. I mean, there, that's a good analogy. There's like a, there's a reality show. I haven't seen it. where like, uh, Grant Cardone has to make a million dollar business in 90 days. Yeah, um, I, see, I, see, I see that. I see that. He goes under yeah, well, here's cover millionaire is what it's called. Right. So yeah. but the point is, if we lose our, our business or lose our job, that's essentially 
the situation that we're in, right? We have to build up as quick as possible. And so if somebody will watch, there's, I don't know, they don't make TV shows for no reason, but there's gotta be millions of people sitting on the couch watching this guy go through this challenge and this struggle, but they're unwilling to do it on their own when like life will give you that whole show in your own life sometime during this lifetime. We just it's, need to remember it's that it's television is seductive, man, because what it does is you get the emotion, uh, experience of the emotion without the physical, without the physical, um, like if I get a perception without having a, uh, something physical in the world that rebalances the perception, it creates an imbalance in my nervous system, my belief system and my body. Now, I, I, I had this conversation with, with Mary today I was saying, look at if you're if you're having if you're in your head and you're in your you're having angry conversations with somebody, you're having that conversation. The, the words are just a confirmation of of that of the conversation. So if you don't have that conversation with them, that creates a deficit in you and in them. You're hurting you and them. So you're better off to have the conversation or adjust that conversation. At least make it positive. Here's something else that's crazy when you think about it you've probably heard the concept that when you dream everybody represents an aspect of yourself yes and that your your mind or whatever is responsible for the dream whether it's like a etheric source that it's not experiencing other people while you're dreaming but it's the same thing when you're thinking when you're going through like, I hate this person, you're really just those emotions you're saying to yourself. Your body's not experiencing you arguing and saying the best things possible to another person. Your, your mind has no, your subconscious has no concept of another person. It only has a concept of self. So you arguing, winning, beating another person in your mind is, is all those emotions are basically just being cycled into you. It's it's like you hating yourself. If you're hating somebody else in your mind, you're hating yourself because your subconscious doesn't have a concept of another person. Hey, uh, somebody here is, was uh, spasming and uh, spamming. You want to help him live? Yeah, I can't see any of the oh, comments. Oh, so shit. I don't know who you're referring shit. to. I can't. I can't even bring him live. Okay, for three entrepreneur, I want you to go do the lower reset. Um, on our website, uh, you should be out of that pelvic floor uh, artery spasm. That, that do the lower reset uh, on our website. I just saw it come up and I wanted to help him, but I, I, I try to bring him live, but I guess they have a private account. Gary, I think uh, I think this was super amazing talk, and um, I think we should end it here on a high note. Let's do it. It was crazy, man. That was a really exciting talk for me. So uh <laughs> we had a good one today. So look at looking forward to that. Um and by the way, we're uh we're heading back to Vancouver for a couple of weeks and back down, but we were thinking about going to Asia and I just want to throw it out to you. Um possibly if you guys might want to join us for part of that. Um uh, we're thinking about we're gonna be doing uh, a road show. Remember the the like Joshua tree, but imagine it with twenty thousand people. Uh, we we're thinking about doing that in uh, Indonesia and in Philippines. So back to your home country. Which I've never been, but I do know they pack stadiums in that side of the world like that. Yeah, so yeah. just throwing that out there. Think about it. We're thinking about mid-January through to the uh, <laughs> end of February. We're thinking about staying there. So maybe think about coming out for a bit because we are going to be doing some of these big events, and I'd love to have you uh, show up and headline that event again. Yes. Yes, let's do it. I'm in. I, I'm i in. Sorry about the coast. Not sorry, but the Costa Rica thing just happened. How oh, it, happened. It, happened and it was actually perfect way, for us. It happened perfectly. It was, it, it was exactly what you needed. We were just talking about that, uh, Carol and I, my wife, yesterday, I think, about how, like, if we would have went to Costa Rica, this wouldn't have happened, and we wouldn't be in this situation, and we would just be getting back, like, yesterday yeah. or two days yeah, ago you're just right? getting back yeah absolutely. so like all the stuff that we just accomplished would have been not it, happened it wouldn't happen reason. differently it happened for a reason yeah. okay right, buddy Gary. See, you, see you next week Thanks awesome for conversation everything okay thank you Take care. that was fantastic thank you raw yeah um that was that was absolutely fantastic had uh, 
Don Richie Palandino. Yeah, three entrepreneur. Just go and uh, do the upper reset, sorry, the lower reset on our, and the barefoot sprinter routine number two. Hello, Don. Is it Don? Yes. Hi. Hi, Don. Hi. Where are you calling from? Hello. from? I'm calling from Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina? Yes. North Carolina, South Carolina, and all the Carolinas in between, right? That's correct. Yes. Don, when's your birthday? It's um, February 20th, 1971. Whoa, you're, you're 28 degree or 27 degree, you know? Um, you're, you're like a master, almost a grandmaster Aquarius. So that means you've got lots of grand mastery in you. That means you had a pretty rough early 30 years, first 30 years of your life. I feel like I've had a rough 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get my chart. I didn't expect to be chosen today. Oh my goodness. My heart. I just did the heart thing with raw. <laughs> that was actually pretty powerful. It was just oh a couple God. quick breaths and I'm like, I'm like, I felt. Oh. oh my gosh, that was amazing. I actually just finished the 28 day reset as well. And that was, um, I've been going through some stuff. Uh, going just um relationship not happy well, well um, when we see no one am... you will tell you why but yeah um I, I'm you're, you're an aquarian you want fairness and equality and you don't want to be attached so yeah yeah my i'm um it says my ascendant is sagittarius what, what degree? first degree what degree what degree 23 23 Whoa, you're you're Gemini Sagittarius. Okay, you're a powerhouse. Okay, what is your what's your degree on your sun sign? Um, first degree Pisces. Oh, you a one degree Pisces? Yes. Oh, that's on the sun oh sign. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, Pisces are beginning it. Like you can talk to Cynthia, follow Cynthia, and reach out to her, Cynthia Human Garage. I mean, Pisces have been going through because we are we are leaving the old self and Pisces. We coming from the age of Pisces. Yeah. And yeah. being a one degree Pisces, it's like my heart is either in it or it's not. And you have a, you have a Sagittarius rising. So basically, yeah. um, your your ego is opposed to who you are. I can feel that. And what's your Chiron? Chiron is seven degrees Aries. Oh, okay. So there's a. I don't know. There's a need. Know too much about Chiron. Okay, so. Aries is the toughest Chiron placement. What it what it does is it it has this need to be recognized or always working to make sure you're recognized for what you do and it's what you do spiritually, what you do right for people and and it's always wanting that that acknowledgement of things which which can get in the way, but it but it and it's not a bad thing. It's just that that's a tough placement to work through. Yeah. It's been tough. So the, the relationship that issues that you're having is because you're still struggling with the relationship in your to you and yourself and your heart and you're changing as a person and and it's scary to make that change because you're committed on one side and you want to bolt and run on the other. Yes. I'm always saying that when my daughter's grown, I'm out of here. <laughs> How old's your daughter? She's 14. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, your husband is what? Or your partner is what? Um, he, he is um, fifty-five. No, but what oh, is his, he sign? The sign he is um, he is a Scorpio. So oh my gosh. His birthday is eleven one sixty-eight. Okay. So yeah, he's a he's like a he's like a very Scorpio, nine degrees. So. He's a Scorpio that gets a little fiery, wants to take leadership a little bit. Yeah, so I can see it. Like um, Cynthia is um, Pisces, 14 degree Pisces with a 26 Scorpio moon. So basically that Scorpio is that harsh cutoff and that like it's that it's that it's the it's and that's what you're feeling against that Pisces energy. It's that um, it's that sharp edge every once in a while. Right. Yes. A lot of highs, a lot of lows. So what are your parents out of curiosity? My parents? Yeah. Oh, 
they are um, Bir very negative. Birthday, birthdays. <laughs> oh, my dad is um, May 7th, 46. Yeah. And my mom is Virgo, 9-6-46. Okay. Okay, I got it. So basically, you're here, to, you're here to learn how to follow your heart. And mm -hmm. your, your Scorpio uh, partner is teaching you how to follow your heart. Oh. And 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 pushing you to do it too and sometimes the way scorpios can do it um is they can they can push the negative side too because they're trying to they, they know what's right so he if he's unconscious he's doing things to you unconsciously which is what you need yeah he is unconscious yeah so he's doing things to you unconsciously what you need though so when an action ha happens that's think about it as you doing something to you to make you smarten up Okay, he says that all the time to smarten up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it, listen, I'm I'm not an expert on Pisces. I mean, Cynthia's a Pisces. I'm still trying to figure it out. My son is a Pisces. I'm still trying to figure him out. Aisha's a Pisces. I I am not claiming to be a Pisces expert. And I'm a 28 Pisces Chiron. Okay. So so I I I came to this world trying to figure out how to embody and manifest the energy of Pisces or the spirit. I'm doing it through, basically, I paid penance in my life. I had a, I had a rough physical life. <clears throat> but, but, but you're, you're, you're here, you're in your mind all the time. And, and your mind is going to both sides in extreme and your heart's trying to figure out what, what it needs to do. Yes, it is. Yeah. You're not speaking your tr truth. I know that. Yes, I've got lots of mouth stuff going on as well. I can because, feel it right now. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of the throat things. I'll do the action, but doing the physical speaking. Because when I speak my truth, it feels like it's, it's the person I live with too is very mute. He doesn't speak his truth. He runs from everything. And so mm -hmm. it makes it very difficult to communicate. Do you, run, do you run from everything? The last 10 years, I feel like I've had an awakening. Um, and I have, I have in the past, but the last 10 years, I've been a louder voice. Um, I had a cancer diagnosis, and what that kind was kind of awakening. What kind of cancer? It, um, it, it was called, it's called MDS, myelodysplastic syndrome. It's a, um, it's in the blood. It's a blood cancer. Well. So you're at one degree, it's of the heart. And, and <clears throat> yeah, this is, is all about, this is all about, and you, it's all about your heart, following your heart. So you're not speaking your truth, not following your heart. Heck, the body's just showing you, like cancer is the body showing, trying to show you something. People yeah. say that we're, you know, that, that the body's broken. I hear it all the time. And I'm like, your body's not broken. It's up and moving and you're talking to me. That's not broken. Yeah. Broken, you're not talking, you're dead. <clears throat> Even though we've done all this stuff to it. But let's yeah. let's release some, some stuff in your heart. Put your right hand in your heart. Yes. Left hand in your throat. Breathe in through your mouth, mouth to your heart. Two. Two. Three. Hello, heart. Hello. I've been ignoring you for too long. I've been ignoring you for too long. Thank you for holding all of the trauma. Thank you for holding all of this trauma. Until I was ready to deal with it. Until I was ready to heal. I'm ready to deal with it now. I'm ready to deal with it now. Breathe in through your nose, to your mouth, or to your neck. Two, three, 
I'm ready to speak my truth. I'm re ready to speak my truth. The truth is from my heart. The truth from my heart. I'm learning to, to trust my heart. I'm learning to, to trust my heart. Not my brain. Not my brain. Breathe in through your mouth. Two. Three. Heart, we're opening up to a new story now. Heart, we're opening up to a new story I'm, now. I'm going to speak my new story now. I'm going to speak my new story. Through your nose. Two. Three. That felt great. I'm sweating. <laughs> and it's 40 degrees here. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. Your, your face is flushed, too. <clears throat> yes, it actually, I went through, I guess I've been detoxing because my face was very blush and breaking out this past week. Yeah, yeah, you're getting rid of the grief that's been on your heart. Uh, ooh, I'll I was going to ask you something too about um, boron. Yeah. You know, my diatomaceous earth and my sea moss and my power kirk. Um, but the boron, I know you say don't Google stuff sometimes because they say it can be very toxic for the body to ingest. Actually, just, just DM us. We'll send you an NIH report that talks about boron. Okay. And then we have it has hundreds of clinical studies including uh peer-reviewed studies and science behind it so boron is one of the most important elements you can do it's how you get it it's the it's the getting it portion that's that's a little bit weird would it that have caused my face to have breaking out well or detox it's going to help you detox but if okay. you're breaking out just do the upper reset a lot right. yeah, yeah do the upper reset once a day uh, most people, what happens is, is that they do all these detox from here down, right. but half the muscles or fascial connections in the body are from the neck to the head. head. What about, <laughs> do you know anything about um, uh, um, lichen sclerosis? Have you ever heard of yeah. that? So I have suffered with that since a child. And it's gotten really worse as an adult, Just, especially since. Yeah, listen, um, <clears throat> my experience is 28 day reset, clean your gut, get rid of the stress on a daily basis, let your body go through it. All yeah. of these diseases are based. So we used to think it was genetics, right? But right. now then we say, well, it's epigenetics, the expression of the gene. Um, so in other words, in, uh, stimulus uh, or stressors cause the genes to mutate and our body to react weird. Well, what's the greatest stressor in the human body? It's our emotions. Yes. <clears throat> so as you go through and you clear up the stress in your body, the body then has more emotional capabilities and more stress capabilities to heal itself. Things I have, I've seen, I've seen people like we're getting people report every day. We get 400 to a thousand testimonials a day of, of people that are transforming diseases of all kinds. Yeah. And it's just because it's not because we're curing a disease. It's because if you take the body out of stress long enough, then the body does what it's supposed to do. It's just yeah. that our lives are stressful and we, we don't even know it. Yes. Someone was asking uh, for that. Yeah. Just DM us, Mich, uh, Michelle, just DM us and we'll send you the actual NIH report and you can get it online. Okay. Nice. <clears throat> yeah. And, <clears throat> and again, what they're what they're talking about is things like borax or boric acid but boron the element is known to be one of the most important minerals for human health okay so it's how you get it and that's that is and you can go buy boron in a store if you want oh. you can go get it as a supplement yeah yeah it's used in a lot of a lot of really good supplements okay good yeah it's just it's just that the, the amount of dose, like you want to take about 100 milligrams of boron, you know, that's that's a, a good dose for detoxing. Okay. And, and 
the way they sell it, you have to take 50 of these little pills. And I'm like, whoa, that's a lot. Yeah, I bought a little bag from a Florida lab. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I put boron, I put borax, um, which is, which has got um, boron, sodium, and oxygen. I put borax in my bath, and that'll help with the skin irritations. Okay. Um, and uh, so I put diatomaceous earth, um, yeah, been, uh, Epsom salt, and borax in my bath. Yeah, I've been doing the flakes and the diatomaceous earth in the bath. Yeah, try the, try the boron in there, too. And the other thing you can put down the bath that helps um, it's hydrogen peroxide and depends on where you are. You can get 15% hydrogen peroxide. It's like a commercial grade and you okay. can put just, just like an, like a ounce in a bath and that, okay. and sometimes you'll know if you get too much, it'll be tingly, <laughs> okay. but it's not going to, not going to hurt you. It's just going to tingle a little bit. So, but, um, that's what I used to bath in and, uh, <clears throat> that, that was part of my daily routine as I was detoxing. Nice. How do you feel right now? I feel tingly. I feel really good. Yeah, you, you, you feel clear. Yes, I feel. You're just holding yeah. on to some excess stuff. And, you know, sometimes that's why these calls are here. That's yeah. why the 28-day reset. Inside the 28-day reset, we now have groups where you can go meet up with other people doing the 28-day reset, do the movements online. And we also have um, a uh, um, an emotional release or or rebalancing groups that happen every week in the 28 day reset. So if you're in the 28 day reset, you can go and they, and they have other people talking about their issues and helping each other out. It's really good. Yeah. I've seen a little of the chats, but I haven't got on a live yet with group, which I'm looking forward to doing. It, it really, I it really helps because you know, like people try to do this all alone, that, especially Pisces. But that's why I'm sad. I'm trying yeah. to do it. Alone. Yeah. Get Get out of that. Yeah. Get in there. Get do it. Do it with other people. That's that's your Piscesness that wants to run away and do it by yourself. <laughs> yes, yes, that's so true. Yeah, yes. Cynthia is always doing that, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm I'm the opposite. I want to do it all in community because I know the power of releasing and working in community. Yes. Yeah. Well, hopefully. So if someone's no, asking okay. where you find the chats for it, go into the 28 day reset, and you can find community events right when you're in the daily chats and in there you'll find links to the zoom groups and there's like 20 to 50 people on a zoom class they do maneuvers together they ask questions they have the other one for emotional release or to work through issues trauma and stuff like that yeah nice well thank you, thank you so much this has been a blessing Don, it was really i nice appreciate to all meet you. you do yes it was nice to meet you as well keep spreading the love in uh carolina Yes, thank you. Bye. Bye. <clears throat>
I feel better now. I knew it was Wednesday and I was going to have my call with Jackie, the human. <laughs> so I knew that there was going to be some support. Um, I was just really had the call. Yeah. You just had it? So that's what the call I was just talking about with that girl is that there's support calls. Mm -hmm. but... Yeah. They held space. They helped me. We processed it. We talked about it. We talked about other things too. Lots of urine therapy conversations. <laughs> yeah. That's a big <laughs> today. Yeah. yeah. So, it's for for me. I, I had this moment because you know, I left my I left my family, my wife, and my kids. You know, I, I was doing what I was at the time trained or thought I was was right. I was leaving them, um, at, because it wasn't working out with my wife. I wanted to have I wanted to have more love in my relationship. It just wasn't working out, and I know now why. But back then, I couldn't see it. And I thought the best way was to leave, to find my myself and to be happy, provide for them and stuff like that. But then, then uh, I got arrested, you know, years later, you know, a bunch of years later, and I was in jail. And then I left my kids, I, left, I went to jail. My kids found out, you know, privacy is my disease. My kids found out in the media, not me telling them. And I was having this conversation with Jason um, during the pandemic when we were, when we were going through all this discovery about fashion and I, and I was, I was just having a moment. I just said, I feel like I'm like just such a bad father. And, uh, and he goes, he, he, Jason, <laughs> he's the same age as my son. And he goes, when are you measuring yourself? Like when did you, when did you cut the measurement? Because I see you here taking care of yourself, working through family issues, working it out with your children right now. How is that a bad thought? I mean, are you going to measure it now? Or are you going to measure it in like when you're like 80 or like 100 years old? I mean, what's the measurement? At 100 years old, that's, that's only a few years. At 80 or 60, that's still only a few years. I mean, you've got a lot of years that you're working, and you're working hard to do it right now. So it's only a judgment. A measurement is a judgment, and I was I was judging myself because I was measuring myself in real saying, at the, based on that moment. But I wasn't even counting the fact that I'm changing as a person in real time. And it took somebody else to tell me that. Look at what you've done in the last you know since I met you a year ago. Yeah, I've come so far. I I've come a, a long way, and that's and that's just you know not that I want to change for my kid, but you know. The guilt of what you said yesterday, you had a woman on who was the same, the two kids with the same Libra and an Aries. Yeah. And it, it's the same thing. It's like this kid is showing me what I did. He's showing me. Yeah, but it, it's also his, it's also his, um, it's also his journey. He picked the path. A soul picks the path. And, and we can't take that away because. You know, my parents, like my father and my mother, they picked their path. And and if my father or mother, if I hadn't gone through abuse as a kid, the way I did, if my mother hadn't have left me, I wouldn't be this person today. So it was part of the journey that I went through to become me. And and so if, so if anything changed, I wouldn't be here helping and working with you right now today. Right, right. So remember that. It's like, it's, it's like we want to take on all this responsibility. That's taking on, when I feel like that and I make those statements, I'm taking on karma. No, they, they pick their journey. I'm going to take and make the best out of this right now, in this moment. Not what I didn't do or what I'm going to do right now, here. You know, the funny thing is, so I had a dream the other day. It was a, a split second dream. I was sleeping, I was laying on my side. I opened my eyes and I'm looking out the window and I'm at your place in Canada in a couple seconds. And I see Cynthia, she's got the mangoes, but she just keeps walking. And then you plop down on the couch and look at me sideways and go, what's going on? And then the next thing I know, Chris plops on the couch and goes, what are you guys talking about? And I'm like, what am I doing here? Um, and then I, then I woke up and then I wanted to find out what the dream meant. So I did a Reiki session during the Reiki session. I went right back into the dream. And you're like, well, it's a good thing you're back. You're the star. I'm like, I don't want to be a star. And you're like, well, you're the star. You don't get a choice. And Chris is like, it's not what you think it means. And I'm like, I don't want to be a star. And um, 
And then later on, so they're like, fine, I'm a star. All of a sudden the earth goes, the foundation is now set. And then you, me, and Chris fly off into the space as stars. So then my friend is, and I'm telling my friend this, and she said, um, and I'm realizing that I can't be a star if I'm holding on to my kid's star. We're both just going to fall and not be able to shine. Right. And so it was just this really, you know, amazing realization that I need to let go. Holding mm -hmm. on is not good for either of us. Right. And and it was really, it was really beautiful. But, but it's, I mean, it's still like I'm I'm okay right now, but I know I'm gonna cry again later. But, um, but I did but also have why? But is crying bad? No, it just hurts. It hurts to know that this child is so is suffering every minute of the, and the whole reason that the suicide attempt is because there's so much pain. His body is in pain every minute of the day, but yeah. he won't take. But you're the, showing he him. He won't take any of the pills. You're showing him. He won't him take the, the answer right curve. now. You're showing him the answer right now. Eventually, hey, when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change, people will change. You know? I'm afraid he'll and die before then. They, Listen, you have no control over that anyways. I know. There, so even making the statement is putting is taking that karma. You get it, there's no good that comes from taking karma from anyone. You're yeah, right. you're, listen, you are unwinding the traumas that you put into your life right now. And they are unwinding those traumas that you were involved with. So let them go through their journey as you go through your journey. And as hard as this sounds, is celebrate the fact that he's having this experience because you know what? It's my near death experiences. It's the times that I didn't want to be here. It's 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 the stuff that happened to me that made me this person. You know, I had I had multiple near death experiences. I had eight concussions. I I, I couldn't even use a computer at one point. I couldn't remember how to make a screen uh, the the screen work. And, and and all of those things, I went to prison. All of those things are a, a major component of who I am today. And I don't want to take away the journey from people because they have their own journey. As hard as it it feels sometimes, like like I want to I want to take away the journey. I want to take away the pain from my kids. But when I take away that pain from them. The pain that they get is twice as hard. I was talking to Rob about that earlier, you know, but I was taking away the pain from clients and it would come back at them two years later, twice as bad. I don't want it yeah. to be twice as bad. So stop, you know, I stopped taking away the pain. You know, I did, I met with, um, there's a lady who did a human, a human grudge. I met with her, Karen. She's a lifestyle artist too. She did a belly button torque on me. And I felt the release, but the delayed reaction, I was doing um, a full moon uh, little, I made this little jar for my inner child. <laughs> and as I was making it, I felt from my stomach, from, from the belly button torque, I realized that I avoid having conversations with my inner child, healing my inner child, because I attach oh, all these m sad memories. I can't ha think about my inner child without thinking about how sad she was or how broken she was or how she was teased. And I realized that that, that five-year-old is really funny. And that eight-year-old has a, a lot to say. And that 13-year-old me you know, has a lot of insight to what I can do. And I realized I don't have to walk down a hall of guilt and shame to have a conversation with my inner child anymore. Yeah. And it was We were, we were taught that we have to be adults, but the truth is people don't act like adults. They act like kids in adult bodies. They have temper tantrums, <laughs> they have fits, they have fears and anxieties. I haven't seen an adult in my entire life. I've seen a bunch of children that, that are in these big suits. And and that, that's, but that's the whole point is that we were, we were meant to be children if we, if we try to not be children, then that's when the pain and suffering comes in. Well, and the, possi the possibilities are now, I was healed 
for 30 years because all of those inner children that were just looked at like avoided like ooh, i don't want to look at you i don't want to think about you i was just shaming myself because yeah. they're all me yeah yeah all i did was shame and i couldn't grow and i couldn't heal because i wouldn't look at those children because they were all broken and healed and made me feel sad you know every time i think about those the five-year-old or the 13 year old that i thought was just oh a crazy kid and i don't want anything to do with her how can i how can i learn from her if i can't acknowledge her so you know what? that belly button tour if if, if all, all this stuff that. wasn't if all this stuff wasn't happening to you i i would be concerned about you not growing you're in the state of of change mm -hmm. and when you're in the state of change things around you are going to disrupt but they always work out Michelle. It, 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 at your heart you know that so anything other than it works out is just the drama that i'm creating don't need to create any more drama i'm trying really hard to believe to believe that that um that he's going to be okay i mean i'm trying really oh, hard hold on a second is he okay right now He's alive. He's okay. Build, build on that. What I, I resist persists. If I worry, it, it, I can't get something good out of worry. So celebrate the wins. All right? People are all like, I get this all the time. People are like, they have some sort of uh, close thing or something happened. They go, yeah, but if it, but that could have been like this. And I'm like, yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah, yeah but it, it, but what if it happened? And I'm like, but it didn't. Yeah, but if it happened, I would have been like this. And I said, it didn't happen. So why are we talking about it? Yeah. You're okay. Okay. He's okay. Build on that right now. Stop telling the story, the narrative of what could have, what could have, would have, should have happened. Coulda, woulda, right. I hold shoulda, on to. Coulda, woulda, shoulda is fear, fear, anger, doubt. Mm -hmm. And I've lived in that for too long. And and the fact that my body went right into a, a maneuver, that my first text, my first instinct of who to contact was human garage, and my first and one of the first thoughts was I get to, you know, have the Zoom call, you know, like you were my. Your whole I knew experience was, I was training home. you out of a out of a way of dealing with it in the, in the past, which is which you're coming out of, which is blame myself. Mm -hmm. The reason mm -hmm. why you're laying in bed for all those years is because you're blaming yourself for something. Mm -hmm. So so basically, you're you're just unwinding that pattern, but you have to go through it. You have to visit again, and that that's what was happening to me when I get. I mean, the Costa Rica thing was bizarre. I spent two days traveling on a two hour two hour travel. It took me two days, but what I was doing is during that period of time, I had every experience mm -hmm. that I hated. Someone yelling at me, people saying it wasn't going to work, that fear of not being let in, all this other stuff was going on. And I'm like, and I just kept observing, 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 saying, no, that's my whole life. I know a lot, and, and it's coming back up. So for me, it all came up in this wild story that you couldn't even, you can't even, you couldn't even make it up. It sounds like, it sounds like there's no way that could happen. And, and that's how I knew it was so important that it was all these things. And it was funny because Chris Wateki reached out to me that night, just randomly, and I hadn't talked to him in a while. And he reached out to me and I'm like, oh, I need to talk to Chris. So I got, got on the phone and talked to Chris and he goes, oh yeah, yeah, you, you have to have all these things come up and you have to have it come up today and tomorrow because that's your karma. And he says, you have to have it come up so that you can have a different narrative, create a different storyline not go back to the old you say i'm not i'm no longer i that's no longer me and that's what you're doing yeah and it also just it valid like sometimes i'm you get you, you know like there's so much going on we got life we got life we got life and then there's fascia for me and i love i love fascia i love to make and play with fascia i get overwhelmed because i don't understand why i understand but sometimes i'm like maybe maybe this is just you know, maybe I need to let go of this fascia fantasy. But this morning, when at the at the darkest time of my life, I mean, there's never been a darker moment than wondering if he was going to be dead or alive. 
I did fascia. I there reached you go. out to you. You're okay. Regret. So at your uh -huh. darkest moment, you're now okay. Yeah. So and nothing. I'm, and I'm so where all, I belong. All I can do is get lighter from here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm where I belong. I and now I'm step four. I belong. I belong yeah. in this world in this realm. So yeah. yes. So thank you so much for for everything. You're you're going through exactly what you need to go through. You're getting the lessons that your that your body wants. And if it's if it, I was I was talking to. Um, Sophia Lajuba, she comes on here sometimes. I was talking to her this morning, and I was saying, um, I was saying she went through two weeks of like literal hell. And I said, the reason why you did that is because you had all this fear about her mom and dying and all this stuff. She had all this fear of surgery and cancer and all this. And then she goes, and she's okay. And she's saying, when are you coming? And I'm like, she's like, she was almost angry that it that it was that it was all okay. It's all this drama. And I'm like. Because it had to be real to you, whether it's real or not, because the emotions had to come out. And the emotions can't come out if it's a fictitious story. Can we do one move maneuver together? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone? Yeah. I don't care. Which, yeah, it's just something. Just getting your head back in the gear. Okay. Breathe into your mouth. Two. Three. Hello, heart. Hello, I heart. I hear you loud and clear. I hear you loud and clear. I know you're in charge now. I know you're in charge now. Breathe into your nose, to your brain. Two. Three. Hello, brain. Hello, brain. I'm not going back to old narratives. I'm not going back to old narratives. I'm telling a new story starting today. I'm telling a new story starting today. Into your mouth, to your heart. Two. Three. I love myself. I love myself. And when I love myself. Self, everything works out. And when I love myself, everything works out. Three. Two. Three. I'm only telling stories that support my heart from this point forward. I'm only telling stories that support my heart from this point forward. I trust myself. There you it's go. my black moon Lilith. I don't trust myself, so I trust myself now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got this. You got this. You're doing great. And it, as real as it seems to be, a wall of fire can come up, come up in front of you, and that fire is not real. I am walking through that wall. That's your Gemini. You are walking through that wall. That fire is not real. You have built the barriers around yourself. You're responding and reacting to those barriers. That's the old Jackie. The new one doesn't have time for that. The new, oh, new one's okay. like, hold my beer. <laughs> hold my fascia toys. <laughs> Perfect. Well, sometimes somewhere that, that's going to be a banned word, I think. <laughs> fascia toys? Fascia toys. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I got I got I got three new ones. So exciting. I can't wait to make a video about them. You feel soon better. Yeah. Yeah. I you got that. this Jackie. Oh, you're sorry, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> That's who I was on with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Willing to bet that she's going through something too in some way. Yeah, and Ruby Jean was on there too, so it was Oh Gemini Trio. Holy smokes, it's like the there's, the yeah, three banderas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're troublemakers, that's for sure.
Okay. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, Michelle. Bye. Okay, everybody. Fantastic day today. Uh, tomorrow we have Claire Crowley coming back. And uh, I think we have a name yet, at Claire's Corner. Claire helps, is going to be helping with women who have either had breast cancer or mastectomies or implants, implants removed, the social and physical consequences. Looking forward, if you have, have any questions, guys, first of all, if you're not feeling it, you're probably feeling it now. Vancouver, the 16th, get there. Honestly, we have, we have people coming from all over the world. 16th of December, Vancouver. Uh, it's a physical, emotional, and trauma reset event. It's not a healing event. It's a reset event. You're, get, you're coming there on a, on a very powerful balancing day to let things go. So we'll see you guys there. Go uh, sign up for it. If you don't know, if you can't get there and you know somebody in the area or close to it, send it to them. Buy it as a Christmas present for them. Do something. Kids are free as well. Also, um, if you haven't done it yet, guys, it's a perfect time to start the 28-day reset. Uh, if you want to support us, again, you can you can take one of our online classes. You can buy some supplements. You can you can post and share your experiences, the things that you're learning. Okay, that's so powerful. It it I, I want you to understand how powerful it is when you share and you help others. So so looking forward to seeing everybody tomorrow. It's going to be fantastic coming to Asia mid January, India. We're still working on. It. Take care, guys.